let's talk about strategy design pattern. Imagine you're shopping online. At checkout, the app offers multiple payment options like credit card, PayPal, and even cryptocurrency. Now think about how developers handle this. They could write one giant piece of code to manage all these payment methods. But what happens when a new payment method is added? The code becomes messy. It becomes hard to maintain and prone to errors. So what is the solution? The strategy design pattern which simplifies how we handle multiple algorithms or behaviors dynamically. It might sound like the factory design pattern, but here we are talking about the behavior at the runtime, not the object creation. So in this video, we'll explore the strategy pattern with Python, identify its advantages and discover real world applications. Let's start by implementing a basic e-commerce checkout system where different payment methods are handled in a single class. This is how our payment processor class would look like. It will have a process payment method which accepts method like the credit card, PayPal or crypto and the amount as an input. We can have like multiple if else condition depending upon which method needs to process the payment. So for example, for the credit card, we can have all the logic for payment processing in here and similarly for the PayPal and the other payment methods. And how do we use this? We call the processor and we call the process payment method and give it a credit card and the amount. Let's try to run. So here it is. So it says uh, processing $100 payment using credit card and processing $200 using PayPal. So this works fine for now. But what happens if a new payment method like Apple Pay is added? We have to modify the process payment method, increasing the risk of breaking existing functionality. Now, since uh, this is dummy uh, method, so it looks very simple, but actually processing payment is like a huge code in itself. So the class becomes rigid and violates the open close principle. If you don't know what is open close principle, it says our code should be open to extension, but close to modification. So we should not be modifying a lot of code, but we should be able to extend it. We should be able to create new classes, which should work like by default uh, with our existing code. So that's what I mean by the extension and modification is like modifying the main logic again and again. Uh, that is not ideal. The problem with this approach is all the logic is stuffed into one method. That is the process payment method, right? So each new method requires modifying the existing code. Second, it will also require testing all payment methods again to ensure nothing breaks. This tightly couples the payment logic to the payment processor class, making it hard to extend or reuse. Now let's solve this using the strategy design pattern. So the strategy patterns allows us to define a family of algorithms, encapsulate them in a separate classes and make them interchangeable. What I mean by that, let's see it in action. Here's how we can refactor our payment system. We can define a payment strategy interface, which will be implemented by different payment methods into their own classes. So this payment strategy interface will have one method called pay, which will take amount as an input. So after we implement this class, for example, for the credit card payment, this is how it will look like. And similarly for the PayPal and crypto payments. So here each payment method is encapsulated in its own class, adhering to single responsibility principle. Like they will only have responsibility to handle payment done by the credit card or for the PayPal payment class, it will only have responsibility to handle the payment done by the PayPal. With the different classes for different payment methods, we can also have our context class, which is the payment processor class. So this payment processor class will have two methods. One is the set strategy. What I mean by strategy is if you want to change the payment strategy from credit card to PayPal, we can set that dynamically at the runtime with our set strategy method and process payment method simply call the pay method of the given strategy. So how do we use this? So we define the processor payment processor and give it credit card payment as an input. And we just call processor dot process payment of hundred and that's it. So the payment processor has the credit card payment strategy set to it. And when we call the process payment method, 
it will call the pay method of the credit card payments so if you want to change the strategy or change the payment method from credit card to a paypal payment we can simply call processor dot set strategy to paypal and that's it we can again call processor dot process payment so let's try to run this and awesome here it is first we call the credit card so hundred dollar payment using credit card then we change the strategy to paypal so it says processing 200 dollar payment using paypal and then before processing 300 dollars we again set the strategy to crypto so here we get processing 300 dollar payment using cryptocurrency so let's weigh the pros and cons of the strategy pattern the first one is the extensibility as we saw we can now add new payment methods without modifying our existing code so our main code remains the same we can simply add new payment class and simply call the new strategy and that's it we do not have to modify our main logic second is the flexibility so we now have the flexibility to switch between payment methods dynamically at runtime and third one is the clean code so now we have our logic divided into smaller manageable pieces so those are all the pros so let's talk about the cons so there are mainly two cons one is the overhead of managing extra classes like here we saw now we have the payment strategy interface then we have different classes for each payment method and we also have a separate class for the payment processor and the second one is the setup complexity so as we saw it requires proper planning to ensure seamless integrations you cannot just start coding you have to think through before writing your code to define the strategy design pattern let's talk about where can you apply the strategy pattern in real life the first one as we saw is the payment gateway can handle multiple payment methods as we saw the second is the sorting algorithm if you have to choose between different types of algorithm like say bubble sort quick sort more sort we can do that based on our data size the third one is the compression tools so we can switch between zip rar or gzip dynamically third one is the authentication system we have seen on different websites we support different authentication method like username password oauth or biometrics so that's the strategy design pattern a powerful way to make your code flexible and maintainable